What's up y'all, Alvin here, and I'm back with another one of my super easy to tie, down and dirty, fish catching guide flies. This one's all about the redfish. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so it's redfish season here in Central Texas. I was filling up my box the other day and I realized I hadn't done a video on this little fly. So this is one of my kind of go-tos when they're being super picky. And like a lot of these flies, this one doesn't have a name. It's really just a variation on a bunch of different other flies that are out there, but I think it's different enough to uh, call it its own pattern. So if you got some ideas for a name, drop them in the comments. <laughs> I usually just tie them and throw them and really don't worry about what to call them. They're just a little green fly. Uh, similar to a clouser or a gotcha, or even a crazy Charlie, a lot of other bonefish, redfish flies out there look like this one. Anyway, this one is super simple. Uh, we got a hook, and for this one, I'm using the uh, TMCO 811S, real common saltwater hook, bead chain eyes, some type of wing material. Uh, I'm not really sure what this is. Um, craft fur would work. Um, this is uh, maybe some um, streamer hair. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is. It's more about the color and the consistency. It's pretty thin fibers. And peacock curl. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's get after it. Get that hook out. Get it in the vise. Crank it down nice and tight. I'm gonna cut me a couple of bead chain eyes off with my trusty nail clippers, toenail clippers. <laughs> a little bit beefier than regular nail clippers. All right, we're gonna attach the thread. I'm not sure how far back that is. I'll just eyeball it. I wanna say it's like 20 wraps. I always like to attach my bead chain eyes this way. Do several wraps like so, then tweak it over, do several wraps on this side, and then do my figure eights. All right, so the next thing is I'm just gonna bring my thread all the way back, even with the point of the hook. Then I'm gonna grab my peacock curl. And I usually use, you know, maybe four strands, four or five. They're all about a consistent thickness, so should be the same. Just depends on the size of the hook. If you need to get a little bit more coverage, you may need to use more strands of peacock, but I'm gonna go with five. Not too concerned about whether they're even or not. I'll trim them off, attach them here. And what I like to do is sort of make a uh, dubbing loop with them. So I'll bring the thread back and I'll just kind of twist the peacock curl around the thread. So I feel like that gives them a little bit more strength and also it makes it a little bit easier to wrap it forward because they all stay together. And then we just wrap it up to the eyes. If I got any extra, I'll kind of build it up a little bit give it a little bit of a taper, but I'm not really too concerned about that. Tie it off in front of the eyes. And I'm not too worried about all these little guys going off in separate directions, as long as you make sure you got them all tied down, because we're just gonna clip that off in a second here.
All right. I'll use the thread to kind of clean that up. And we are almost done. Grab a little bit of this hair clump, maybe about like so. A little thicker. All right. Give it a couple pulls, pull all that excess out. And I want it to be a little bit longer than the hook itself. I'll clip it off, tie that down. Build up a little bit of a head and that is it. Go ahead and give it a quick whip finish. or two. <laughs> I like to do two whip finishes because then that way, if I don't want to, I don't have to put head cement on it. And that is it. So like I said, this is one that I go to when they're being picky. So like I said, I don't know. There's probably some other fly <laughs> that's tied like this uh, that already has a name, but I don't know if there is. I haven't seen that exact pattern anywhere. And like I said, this is one that I would use when the redfish are being picky. Um, you know, they're not eating a clouser, they're not eating some of the bigger patterns. I'll go to this guy and I've had some success on some of those tough days. Uh, I'm sure it would work for bonefish. I'm sure it would work for carp uh, and probably several other species. If this is a known pattern, please throw that in the comments. I, like I said, I hadn't seen anything exactly like it. If it's not a known pattern, if nobody can figure out what it is, feel free to give it a name. <laughs> anyway, I wanna thank y'all for watching the video. Uh, it really helps if you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.